Greetings programs. Welcome to Stechosaurus Studios. This is the shop. I'm Mike and let's get through the video of the logo so that I can actually get on to the content of this video. Okay, so this is Pit Droid episode number four. four. Um, so in this episode, we are going to show the assembly of the head. Uh, and then a little bit at the end um, will be the uh, a little bit on the, the right shoulder. Um, so through the magic of video editing, I actually already have enough video footage all the way through episode six. Remember, this is four. Um, so I'm actually recording this well after most of the video has already been shot. Um, so I just needed to edit everything and get it out there and post it. Cool. So roll on two. Now when I um, when I printed the so this is the base for Dummy's head. Um, and when I printed it, I couldn't fit the whole thing on the bed of my printer. Um, so I had to use the split one, um, which uh, Dave provides. Uh, he also I think provided so there's holes here here for dowels on each piece. Um, I think he provided the dowels, but when I looked in fusion at the holes in here, they actually have a spherical concave end. So in order to maximize contact, um, I made, uh, my own dowels that have, um, the rounded ends that match the rounded ends on the inside. So, um, so that way I get maximal contact, um, when I join these together, um, Speaking of which, let's talk about that. So I printed the, uh, I'm printing everything in ABS. Uh, and there's lots of different filaments you can choose, uh, PLA, PETG, um, so on and so on. Uh, ABS is the one that I print with. And um, there's two ways basically to join uh, plastic. Um, so first is glue where you have two pieces of plastic and you're counting on the adhesive in the middle to hold the two pieces together. That's an adhesive or a glue. Um, there's a different method though, which is uh, called solvent welding. Um, and it's where you put a solvent on the surface and it actually melts the plastic and you put it on both pieces, you put it together the melted plastic fuses together um, and then the solvent evaporates. And for ABS, that solvent is acetone, which you can get from your big box store or your local hardware store. I get it from my local hardware store. So um, I'm going to glue, or in this case, actually solvent weld these pieces together with these fancy um, dowels that I made. Uh, and uh, yeah, so you can, uh, couple ways you can do it, um, and I'll actually probably use both. Um, you can pour a little, um, uh, a little of the acetone into a little squirt bottle with a hypodermic needle on it. Um, and I've done that. I did that for most of uh, when I built R2. Um, or you can dip a brush into the acetone and brush the surfaces. Um, I will probably actually do a little bit of both. Uh, I'll brush the surfaces, put it together, and then I'll go back once they're together uh, and clamped. I'll run a little bead of uh, acetone in there and that'll wick down in between the pieces and get a nice uh, good connection. So that's what I'm doing now. But first, I'm gonna glue the magnets in. So the uh, the dome, dummy's dome, uh, fits on the base plate and it's held on by these two magnets. Um, so I'm using some E6000 uh, to glue the magnets in place. Um, so there's two magnets in the base, two magnets in the head. Um, now, the, the potential for screwing that up is high, trust me. I've done it before. Um, you you want to make sure you keep track of the north and the south. Now you can do it however you want. You can write north and south on each one. Um, what I do is you see is I've got them all in a stack and then I make sure when I pull them off, I pull them off the same way each time. So got those magnets glued in. Uh, here I apologize for the crappy camera angle. Um, 
So I'm still getting used to this uh, videography thing. So you can see the acetone can. You can't see that I'm dipping the brush into the can to get the acetone out. Uh, but anyway, I put the, uh, the dowels in and then paint the edges. Um, you can see there my little squeeze bottle um, with the hyperdermic needle that'll come into play um, once I get these things together. Um, just like that, they're together. Um, uh, so I, I said earlier that I would do run the, uh, uh, use this run a bead um, once it was clamped. Um, I was actually having lots of difficulty. I've edited the crap out of this. I was having difficulty getting it clamped. Um, so I'm running the bead now and I actually did clamp it, but i um, not showing it on the video. Uh, I clamped it once I was done here. So anyway, yeah, gluing it. Oh, um, and don't worry if you glue it to the, the mat. It doesn't stick very well to the mat, the cutting mat. <clears throat> okay, so putting the neck on, so the, the head brackets fit through those slots. You can see um, there's you know two slots for each head bracket. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I've um, just used some screws uh, with uh, some big washers on them to hold it in place. Um, I edited it so it looks like I um, got this done right the first time. I didn't. Um, I actually screwed it up like two times, I think, before I got it right. Um, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. It's made more difficult because you, it's hard to make it stable because, you know, the neck is wanting to move, the head's wanting to move. But anyway, four screws. Uh, and I didn't want to glue it on. Um, I want to be able to remove the head for maintenance purposes or changes, you know, um, whatever. Otherwise, you glue it on, it's tough to access. So that's bracket right there. That's the bracket that holds the left-right servo, the servo that turns his head left and right. Um, and then there's a spacer, and then there's a servo arm. Um, and it's that servo arm that the left-right servo attaches to. We'll get to that. Not this episode, but next episode. Um, that servo arm has... Uh, it's 3D printed. It has... Um, a space for the nuts. So the nuts are captive, which is nice. You don't, you know, not fumbling around with them. So it makes it a lot, a lot easier to get it installed. So you can see here, I've gotten one in and this is the second one. Um, you want to get it as straight as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Um, uh, there's a, it's pretty forgiving. Now I, before I put the servos in, I wanted to make sure that they were, um, in the middle of its range. So the, the range goes from, in PWM numbers, goes from 1,000 to 2,000. So I'm putting each one of these servos onto a what's called a servo tester. Um, servo tester can make it oscillate, can uh, you can adjust it manually, but it also just commands it to go to 1,500, which is the middle of the range. So I command it to 1,500 before I screw the servo arms on. Um, and these tiny little screws are pretty fiddly. Um, and again, I'm trying to balance it on the neck, so that makes it a little bit harder. Um, I'll show in a second the second servo. The, the servo comes with a bunch of different armatures, um, but they don't have just a single arm. They have a, a double arm, which comes out both sides and then across and a couple of others. Um, and so I ended up uh, when I, f I initially just put one of the, the double arm ones in, slapped it in and realized that the back side of the arm was hitting the, the head base plate. So I had to take a Dremel tool and cut it off. So there you see, I have trimmed off one side of the, the double arm one. So now it's a single arm. And then when I put it uh, on the, the head uh, base, it, uh, that bottom, isn't hitting the head base. So, uh, and then finally putting the servo into the brackets and I'm not gonna show you all of the screws. Hey guys, so uh, um, first of all, I, I might look a little rough today. Um, I went over the handlebars on my mountain bike yesterday. So my face and my head look like literally 100 miles of bad road because, well, it's actually just a couple of feet of bad road, but um, I'm pretty stiff and sore, but anyway, uh, here I am recording. So um, one of the things that I've been working on quite a bit um, 
I, I'm, I know I got to work on the speeder, but I've been really focusing on the pit droid is so left arm motion, um, all the animatronics and, and everything, uh, that's, uh, been a sticky wicket. Um, I having a lot of difficulties. Um, that's for some future, um, videos. Um, but I've also been working on his right arm. Now when we, so, um, I actually printed up a little, uh, designed and printed up a little steering wheel for him. Um, so as a human, when we reach out and grab a hold of the steering wheel and we move it around, we don't really have to think about how our wrist and elbow and shoulder joints all move. We just do it. Um, but when you're designing a robot, um, you have to think about those things. So um, eventually I'm going to put this steering wheel on a test rig and hook it up to his arm and move it back and forth and see how his arm reacts and see where changes need to be made. Um, but one of the things that I've already done is on the wrist. So this is the old uh, piece design. So uh, there's a shaft that goes in here. I could pull it out, but I'm not going to. Um, this is his thumb right here. That his fingers are removed, so his fingers go up and down, but the thumb is fixed. Thumb doesn't move. The wrist could turn, but it doesn't wouldn't wave. Um, his fingers could wave. It'd be a wave like that, which would, um, I guess, work. But I'm trying to get a little more uh, degrees of freedom out there. Um, well, and this guy, his right arm's not going to wave anyway. It's got to just hold on to the steering wheel. Um, and so what I wanted to do was give this joint uh, more degrees of freedom. So hopefully the camera will focus on this. What I found was this little doodad on Thingiverse. This is a ball joint. Um, it's got, it's basically three pieces. It's the ball, it's a base, and it's the collar. And what I have done is I've now put in, put, put in, there's good English for you. Um, I put the base on this. So I eliminated the hole and the shaft um, and put the base on here and uh, created a longer ball. Um, and then I've modified the hand so that, um, I've got to put the collar on first. So collar goes on to the, the ball and then there's now a socket on the hand and that fits in. And then this collar screws on and holds. So now his wrist is basically can spin. It's got all kinds of degrees of, of freedom. So I'm kind of hoping that when he now holds on to the steering wheel, um, that gives him a little bit more ability to move all of his joints um, and still maintain hold. Now, um, uh, gonna try it with just the way it is now. So this, this wrist and then the elbow as it is and the shoulder, there's actually two shoulder versions that were in the files. Um, one is a fixed, just basically right angle shoulder. And the other is a two piece. Um, so I'm going to be using the two piece. And so basically the plan is to get um, uh, all of his arm put together, build some sort of test rig that'll have the steering wheel on it, tape his hand to the steering wheel, um, and then with that rig, rotate the steering wheel back and forth and see what his wrist, his elbow, and the two joints in the shoulder, how they react and see if it can maintain a square grip on the steering wheel. Um, and if that doesn't work, then I'll be redesigning the, some more joints on the right arm. And if it does work, then I'm going to be done. So um, anyway, that's, uh, that's the new joint on the arm. Okay, so I know that that right arm stuff that I just talked about, um, it, it kind of violates a rule, which I had mentioned previously, which is not having plastic rotating on plastic. Um, so I actually have a, uh, because of the work on the left wrist design, um, I, I could port that design over to the right wrist and I might do that. Um, that uses bearings and you'll actually see that like I think in the next episode, episode five. Um, 
uh, and I'm probably going to put bearings in the elbow, uh, the right elbow as well. So anyway, it remains to be seen uh, how many more changes are done on the right, um, and it'll depend on all the testing that I do. So yeah, that's got to got to get done. Um, I know this episode's a little short on content, and I apologize for that. Um, I, uh, as far as the servos, which you saw getting put in the, the, the head, um, I, I ended up redesigning the linkages a couple of times, um, and all of that footage uh, I tr thought about putting in this episode, but I thought it would make this episode really too long. So uh, that'll be episode five. will be all the servo linkages and head stuff. Um, so actually then I guess the wrist stuff is episode six. Um, it's all getting very confused. Um, anyway, uh, I promise episode five, actually I promise this episode I'll post soon and episode five will be on its heels and six after that. Um, but I also need to like do stuff to make episode seven. So that's got to come. Anyway, go out and build stuff. It's fun. I, I promise. <laughs>